Well, I have to admit, I was wrong. When I posted a video last Friday, I said that would be the very last yellow jacket and bald face hornet nest removal video I did for 2023. This by far has been the busiest yellow jacket season I've ever seen. I removed over 20 nests, and in this last one, it's pretty clear the season's winding down. The yellow jackets and bald faced hornets were at the end of their natural life cycle. The colony was dying off, and pretty much the only thing inside were a few lethargic queens that are engorged in eggs. They're gonna find a safe place to overwinter. They're hibernating. Then they're gonna merge next spring and build a new nest. And all the workers could barely even fly. They couldn't sting me. I didn't need a bee suit. So I thought it was the end of the season, but then I got a call from a friend who got stung by a below ground yellow jacket nest. They're still very active and aggressive. So clearly the above ground ones are not as protected and they have a shorter life cycle. But the below ground yellow jacket nests are still going strong, so we're gonna do one more. But I don't have my bee suit with me. All I have is a weed burner. So we're gonna use a flamethrower. Now normally I use these weed burners to remove weeds from my garden. They work really well. You can kill the weeds and you don't have to use pesticides. But I thought since I don't have a bee suit, I really wanna take out this nest quickly. I'm gonna light this up and incinerate the nest. Then we'll dig it up and take a look at it, see how big it is, what's left at least. It's completely camouflaged and the person that got stung walked near it and they just swarmed out and stung. So what I'm gonna do is very carefully walk up to this nest, go ahead and light it and then go full bore. We're gonna go Hank Hill style, propane and propane accessories. So let's burn out this yellow jacket nest. I expect to get stung, but I don't react, I'm not allergic. But since I don't have my bee suit, there might be a few flying around that will get me. We'll have to see how many times I get stung, but I don't think any below ground are gonna make it out alive. Let's go ahead and start taking care of this yellow jacket nest. Okay, I'm all set up here. I have a shovel to dig it up when we're done and my flamethrower, the weed burner. So we're gonna start this up. If you see me dancing around, it's because I'm getting stung. So far it's working well. Gotta make sure I don't burn my camera. Now I'm gonna shoot that flame down inside the hole. Well, that seems good for the initial attack and I wanted to do this method for a long time, but I'd never even try it because I would catch the fields on fire. Usually they're in the summer and it's hot and dry, but it's raining right now and it's wet. So there's no fire danger. We're going to dig this up and if they swarm out, I'm going to burn the rest of them. Sometimes they can have a very long tunnel and the flames might have not got down to the nest. We'll find out real soon. It's not easy to dig one-handed, so I'm gonna burn out the area again and then set this down. Keep this on standby. I found the nest, it's right here. I'm gonna stick my hand in there and see if they're dead. Oh, they're in there. Well, that method worked extremely well. Take a look at this nest. It was pretty big and there's quite a few yellow jackets in there, but initially they pretty much got burned out and I was in no risk even though I didn't have a bee suit. Let's take a closer look at this burned out colony. So it wasn't very far underground and you can see this paper is still burning. I'm gonna sure to douse that with water because I don't want it smoldering underground, but the paper around the nest seems to be burning pretty well. And the dirt here is full of all the members of the colony there. And here is what's left of the nest. There are several layers. Uh, this one is still full of larva and pupa. See those in there? So this wasn't slowing down at all, even though it's getting cold. You can see all these other yellow jackets. Quite a few of them are larger. These look like a burnt marshmallow, but there's a bunch more right there. 
That one was about to emerge. That's a pupa there turning into an adult. So apparently above ground yellow jacket and bald faced hornet nests don't last very long in the winter, but the below ground ones are protected and persist into November, maybe even later. Well, a lot of times when I dig up these nests, I feed them to wild animals. Skunks especially like eating the yellow jacket nests. And I've even used these larvae as fishing bait and I've even cooked them and eaten them. They're actually pretty good. These are well cooked now inside their uh, nest here. Not bad. Take a look at that. It's already cooked inside the nest and hey, they're actually pretty tasty. They could be survival food. I guess the only thing left to do is we have this very large nest from the last video. Since it's made of paper and since I have a flamethrower, let's light it on fire. Okay, a big part of this is I like lighting things on fire. Also, I need a good thumbnail. So we'll go ahead and set this bald faced hornet nest ablaze. That burns pretty well. Oh, it fell off the stick. Well, if I wasn't so worried about fire danger, this would be a perfect way to remove yellow jacket and bald faced hornet nests, both above ground. They light up like a candle and below ground. You pretty much wipe out the whole nest before they can sting you. I really enjoy doing these nest removal videos, especially when the nests sting people and I'm dealing with a very dangerous situation and I can make it so that people can go in their yards and houses. We dealt with so many nests this year, everything from up on people's houses, in barns, on trees. We did below ground nests, nests along trails. It was pretty crazy. So if you have a yellow jacket and bald faced hornet problem, check out those, especially if you find a nest. And if you don't find a nest, but you just wanna trap the yellow jackets, I have many videos on how to trap them. My favorite DIY trap is where you hang chicken meat over a tub of soapy water. The yellow jackets grab meat, fall down, and you catch a thousand very quickly. But there's also quite a few commercial ones available on the market, so check out those videos as well. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel. Usually I'm posting videos on catching mice and rats, but this year there's been quite a few for yellow jackets and bald faced hornets. If you haven't subscribed, please consider clicking that button. I've posted over a thousand videos on YouTube and currently I'm posting new videos every Monday and Friday. So if you wanna see the best videos on how to catch mice, rats, squirrels, chipmunks, moles, voles, and gophers, and occasionally burn up a yellow jacket nest, stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have a mouse problem, please consider clicking the link in the description and purchasing one of the mouse traps I invented. It's called the Dizzy Dunker Mousetrap, and I consider it to be the greatest mousetrap ever made.